Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and everybody wants to seemingly build a better C++, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Something called CPP Front, or C++ Front, and this is from a fellow named Herb Sutter. This is an attempt to make a better C++ syntax. The language itself is kind of untouched. This builds on top of C++, sort of like C++ built on top of C, back when it was C with classes, or you can think more like modern day, say, TypeScript, how it builds on top of JavaScript. So this is an attempt to make C++ better by giving it an all-new syntax. Now, the author behind this is someone named Herb Sutter, and that's a name you probably know if you are working in the C++ world. First off, he created one of the most uh, well-regarded books in the world of C++ in the form of Exceptional C++ and also More Exceptional C++. He wrote regular articles in Dr. Dobbs' journals. He spent 10 years on the ISO C++ Standards Committee, and he also did some of the most, let's say, controversial projects in C++ history in the form of C++.net. Uh, uh, C++ CLI and so on, the, the basically the bridges between .NET and C++. But what we're talking about today is uh, basically CPP Front, and he just did a uh, talk about this at CPPCon 2022. I will link this down below. We will get back to that in a couple more minutes. Also, this is an open source project. Uh, we will get back to these details in a second as well. I'm going to show you a quick hands-on of how CPP Front works. First off, you could build this yourself quite easily. You just need to have a C++ 20 level compiler. Uh, once that is done, we'll go ahead and open up an example. So hello cpp 2 so that two part is kind of important. That is the new syntax here. And you're going to notice it looks, here, let me switch this to C++ style markup so it looks a little bit more familiar. So here you can see this is what C++ CPP front code looks like. It's kind of a, an evolution. Again, I've said this in a previous video, all syntaxes seem to be kind of converging on the same ultimate syntax. I think we're going to often just basically see this is the new, the norm. It seems like every language designer out there likes this code look. But here you can see this is the newer, cleaner, safer syntax that he's proposing with syntax two in CPP front. Now, unfortunately, they're not really great documentation on what the new language is all about. I'd love to see that written. Instead, it is a bunch of talks he's done. We'll show those in just a second. And there are a ton of these regression tests you can check out. So once you've actually got this, go ahead and run this. Let's open up a new terminal like so. And all you do is you run, so let's switch into our directory. So temp CPP front, and then it is the uh, regression test that I'm in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run CPP front, which I've already built. Again, you need C20 to make that work. And then you just kind of compile your code. So hello.cpp2 and, oh, oops, CPP front hello.cpp2. And there we go. We have just went ahead and built it. Didn't seem to do much. So what did it do? Well, it just created uh, this. So we now have hello.cpp. So again, this is like what C++, um, C++ was when it was C with classes. It compiles down to C++ code. So let's go ahead and open up our newly generated CPP file. And this you would then compile using your regular compiler. Now, one of the big things that they're trying to do with uh, the C++ 2 syntax is that you can mix and match in entirely with C++ code in there as well. So your C++ 2 code or CPP front code will be able to have C++ code in it, but obviously not the other way around. Uh, so we looked at something a little while ago. It had a bi-directional attempt. This is not bi-directional. This is a one-directional approach to fixing C++ syntax. So here you can see this is the generated code. Uh, it's not that different. It's using a number of newer features such as no discard, uh, but it's basically compiling one to the other. So now you've got the C++ code that your normal traditional uh, tool chain will handle just fine. So that is the entire idea behind CPP front. Now let's look at the why of it. So we're going to head on over here to the, um, the GitHub project page. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is not meant for production by any means. This is a personal experiment on creating a C++ syntax, C++2. Uh, so goals and histories. My goal um, is to explore whether there is a way we can evolve C++ itself to become 10 times simpler, safer, and more toolable. If we had an alternative C++ syntax, it would give us a bubble of new code that doesn't exist today where we could make arbitrary improvements. Uh, example, change defaults, remove unsafe parts, make the language context free, order independent, and generally apply 30 years worth of learning uh, free of the backward source compatibility constraint. So he started this project in 2015 to 2016 uh, with the Syntax 2 design work. Since then, my ISO 
also as um, evolution proposals and conference talks have come from this work, each presenting one part of the design as a standalone proposal under today's syntax, usually with a standalone prototype implementation to validate and refine that part. Since 2021, he's been writing a compiler, front end compiler to prototype all the parts together as a whole, working as intended, uh, now including the alternative syntax two for C++ that enables their design, uh, including otherwise breaking changes. So uh, this is about C++ 20 slash 23, not something else. So his entire idea here is C++, each one of these little bumps is sort of making a 10% improvement over here. Uh, whereas um, what he wants to do with the syntax too is make a 10x improvement in, again, all those areas he talked about earlier on, performance, um, not necessarily performance, sorry, safety, uh, productivity, etc. cetera. Um, so they've been improving the ergonomics with each release, uh, but again, 10% improvement. So he wants to do a huge chunk forward. So what if we can have a compatibility cake and eat it too by having 100% seamless link compatibility always. So no marshalling, no thunking, no wrappers, no generated compatibility modules to import export uh, legacy C++ code and 100% seamless backward source compatibility always available, including 100% uh, SFINAE and macro compatibility. Only pay for it when we use it. That is applied to C++ plus plus is familiar zero overhead principle also to backward source compatibility. So number one, the biggest cost of doing this is the fact that the new code, while being backwards compatibility, old code will obviously not be forward compatible. Uh, so uh, that is the project here uh, in terms of like what the goals are. What are they trying to do out of here? Uh, fix defaults, for example, make no, no discard the default. Double down on modern C++, example, make C++ 20 modules in C++ 20, uh, C++ 23, import standard the default. Remove the unsafe parts that have already been superseded. So remove union and pointer or arithmetic. Uh, have type and memory safety by default. Um, make the C++ core guidelines safety profiles the default and required. Eliminate 90% of the guidance we have to teach about today's complex language. Uh, make it easier to write a parser, make it easier to write refactoring and other tools. Uh, so he's got some acknowledgement here. He's worked with or gotten feedback from some pretty big names here, including Bjorn Strostrup, basically the father of C++. Anders, oh, I forget how to say your name. Sorry, Anders uh, Hedgelsberg, uh, who is the uh, father of uh, C Sharp, and then before that, the Delphi programming language. And you game developers amongst us may recognize the name Tim Sweeney. Now, they have given insights, feedback, and outright disagreements with some of what he has proposed. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and check it out, as I mentioned earlier on, all you need to do is have a major C20 compatible compiler, uh, such as uh, Visual C, the newest versions, uh, GCC, or Clang. Uh, do note that on your platform, there's a pretty good chance you're going to want to omit this part while doing the build. Uh, this will then turn it into, you can compile your CPP2 file, just like what we saw in action earlier on. Um, and then documentation, there is no documentation, which is unfortunate. Uh, I love this one though. I'm not posting much document because that would imply this project is intended for others to use. So if I'm gonna point anything out, this is not really meant as like an official new language. This is sort of a, a guiding principles towards a better world going forward. Well, it's kind of like a what if we just said, screw the current syntax, let's create something new that is also compatible or backward compatible. So there are a number of talks about this. Uh, this is probably never going to actually be anything, uh, but parts of it may be incorporated into C++, or we might actually see something like this syntax two, uh, where basically we create a newish language or a new language syntax that keeps all of the other compatibilities that it can. So uh, that is the um, the overall, the, the all the talks he did about evolving the C++ language are linked here. I will link this down below. Also, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, he just did a talk about this. Um, it is available now as well. And some uh, details of it, uh, actually, I think it's available now. Yeah, okay, so now it is available. When I first covered this, it wasn't actually out there. So uh, this talk is now available. So if you wanna hear more about the whole idea behind Syntax 2 and CPP Front from the CPP Con uh, Convention of 2022, it is now available as well. Again, uh, Herb has a very robust uh, resume. He's had a lot of input in the world of C++, somewhat controversial at times, uh, but I'd be interested to hear what you think of the idea of fixing air quotes around that C++ by basically inventing a new but backward compatible 
uh, and mix and matchable uh, syntax. It's an interesting approach, in my opinion. I am not really that involved with C++. I haven't really used C++ since C++17, so I don't really know how the language has evolved otherwise. But I do know every time there is an evolution, there's more and more and more legacy cruft in the language. The syntax is one of the most confusing for any languages out there. And having an optimization pass over it would be a decent thing. So if you do want to go ahead and check it out, uh, where you're going to want to probably start is basically in the regressions folder, you're gonna find a number of CPP2 files for a number of different tasks. Uh, so if you wanna go ahead and check some of these out, uh, we just looked at the simple hello world here, uh, but there are a number of examples that you could come in here and check out. And again, to compile them down, it's simple, just basically, um, pick the CP2, CPP2 file and it will generate a uh, CPP file as long as it doesn't error out. Uh, as you can see, this actual example did. Uh, it choked on IO stream not being found for some reason. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and check out CPP front, uh, do head on over to uh, the GitHub repository. Basically just clone it, build it with a C++20 compatible uh, folder, add the path to the binary somewhere. This is the generated CPP front binary. And you can start compiling CP2, CPP2 files over to CPP. Now do keep in mind, again, this is more of an experimental language than an actual language. And there is very, very little documentation beyond the um, you know source code examples that are out there and the, the extent of what he has given in his talks. So this is not something that is going to be used anywhere in production. And when it is finally a finished and shipping project, uh, if it ever becomes something like that, it's going to probably look much, much different, but it is an interesting topic. And I'd be interested to hear what you think of the idea of air quotes fixing C++ by creating a new syntax. Let me know. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.